The VDR2 could very well be the first hypersonic engine capable of reusability and hypersonic passenger flight. The propulsion system combines high thrust and efficiency of the rotating detonation rocket engine with the simplicity of a ramjet. The claim is that this type of engine would allow an aircraft to go from Mach 0 to 6 speeds, and in the future it could power a single stage to orbit vehicle. But in reality, this has never been done before, and there are a lot of questions on how a ramjet would perform at these lower velocities, let alone how would this engine work at a standstill on the ground. A typical ramjet is a very simple design. There are no compressors or turbines, and it is comprised of a fuel injector, a flame holder, and a combustion chamber. This simple setup basically introduces air, slows it down to subsonic speed, mixes it with fuel before reigniting it to supersonic speed. However, this simplicity does not directly translate into a highly efficient engine. There has to be a balance between the velocity of the incoming air and the consistency of the flame holder. And this forces a narrow operating range, typically Mach 3 to 6. So if you want to build a totally reusable aircraft that can take off from the ground, then you need some sort of hybrid system that can be incorporated with the ramjet. The emergence of the hybrid rocket-based combined cycle has offered some very intriguing possibilities. In theory, it could work from zero to hypersonic speeds and is composed of four stages. The ejector from ground level, the ramjet, possibly a scramjet, and a rocket mode. The ejector would initiate rocket propulsion, so it's one of the most critical components in the vehicle. This would work for a short duration during takeoff phase, and it would get the craft going fast enough to initiate the ramjet phase. But the problem with this kind of design is that you would need to maximize efficiency for all stages of the engine. Not to mention that you would have to have some pretty strong alloys in order to handle all these extreme temperatures inside the nacelle. Now, the only type of engine that has even come close to this type of design is probably the air-breathing rocket engine called the Sabre. But the problem with this type of engine is that it would require a lot of propellant. 90% of the vehicle would be fuel and oxidizers. So basically, it would be a flying tank. If you can figure out how to implement a hybrid ramjet into the rocket engine, then it is possible that you can decrease propellant mass, maybe something down to 70%. Now, the approach from Venus Aerospace is a very interesting one because they are not attempting to go orbital speed. They have not revealed any technical details, but one could definitely assume that this is an RBCC axisymmetric design it would be critical to have an ejector phase which can get the plane from a standstill to mock speeds. And this would also incorporate a rocket engine with the air breathing mode into one shared combustion chamber. What is known is that the company has already developed prototypes and they're kind of giving us glimpses of what critical components would need to be incorporated into this type of engine. One of them is the aero spike nozzle, which is basically the truncated spike at the end. This type of nozzle automatically compensates for altitude to maintain efficiencies. But this type of nozzle is very tricky to build because you need a alloy that has a high temperature resistance but is lightweight as well. We have seen glimpses of new alloys like GR COP42 which could potentially solve these problems and thanks to technological innovations like 3D printing and alloy development, it's very probable that we will see more aerospikes spikes implemented into rocketry in the future. But another critical attribute would be to implement rotating detonation into the engine. This is where detonations travel supersonically around a channel. And you can kind of think of this as one explosive continuous tornado. This type of engine requires a very high temp alloy that is capable of handling high pressure. But you'd also need to properly control the detonations. So far the most effective way to do this is in computational fluid dynamics. And you can perfect the design without prototyping and spending massive amounts of money, even though that seems like a contradiction for NASA. So far, rotating detonation seem to be just applied to rocketry, but there have been really interesting developments like the General Electric dual mode ramjet. The company has claimed that this ramjet is capable of rotating detonation, therefore it's able to operate at a wider efficiency range. Something like this implemented into the hypersonic VDR2 could be definitely game changing. And there is a high probability that Venus Aerospace could be working on something similar to this in their hybrid rocket ramjet engine. Now, to me, I do think that this is a potential engine of the future because 
It can not only lead to something that can cruise at a very high altitude at hypersonic speeds, but it also could lead to something like a single stage to orbit vehicle. It would essentially still be a flying tank, but nevertheless, it could take off and land on the ground. It's going to have to handle high temperatures and high pressures. And maybe there, in the future, there could be an alloy that's going to be able to house all these different stages in one engine. But more importantly, I'd like to know what you think. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe to my channel.